So, the profound conclusion of quantum physics reveals that the material physical world that we experience is simply an illusion of our consciousness, that the universe is just made out of energy. Let me put this in terms that are more easily understood, and it's a story of good news and bad news. I say, so what's the bad news? Well, the bad news is civilization as we know it is coming to an end. What's the good news? Civilization as we know it is coming to an end. Well, how can that be the good news and the bad news at the same time? And the answer is profoundly simple for the fact is this that human civilization's behavior has precipitated what is called the sixth mass extinction of life on this planet. Five times in the history of the planet, life was thriving and some cataclysmic event wiped out up to 90% of life. And guess what? We are in the sixth mass extinction, but it's caused by human behavior. Relevance is this. For us to move into the future and survive, we have to change civilization's culture and its foundation. I said, well, how can you do that? And the answer is this. You cannot build it on today's civilization because that's the cause of the problem. Albert Einstein told us you cannot solve the problem with the same thinking that created the problem. So when you look at the world today and you see it as, oh my God, it's falling apart. I go, great, great news, why? Because the only way to move into the future is build a new civilization. So if you understand the nature of the new physics, it really gives us hope for a very good reason. It can take us from the hell we are experiencing on this planet now into a world of heaven on earth for all of us. Thank you very much. Wow, looking at the world and seeing what's going on right now, all the chaos, the upheaval that's going on is so distressing at one level. And it's interesting for me because as a scientist, I can stand up and talk about the fact that today's chaos is a necessary requirement for the evolution that we would love to see. And yet I, like you, have to live in this crazy world. It's mind blowing, it's crazy. And it becomes really important because all of this stuff that we're hearing is motivating fear. And fear, by its definition, is disempowering. Because when you're in fear, you're expressing, I have no power to take care of myself. And we give up power. And we give it up to other people to create the world for us. And obviously, by looking at this computer and watching what's going on around the world, those so-called leaders are not really helping us get to the destination of a heaven on earth reality. And it's time to recognize, yes, fear, takes away our power. I've talked about that in many, many lectures, talked about the fact that stress hormones actually shut down our consciousness and puts us into a reactive mode. Well, this is not a time for reaction. This is a time for creation. And this is what the emphasis of quantum physics has been telling us, that it's our consciousness that is making creation. And yet, if we're living in fear and consciousness is coming from fear, then what world are we creating? Well, that's the chaos we observe every day on the news. So in this situation, what we really have to do is just listen to the words of Franklin D. Roosevelt when he said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Also relevant today are the profound words by Frank Herbert in Dune, where he says, fear is the mind killer. And this is what we have to recognize. Well, I've been talking about the fact that consciousness has created our world, and I say it's based on science. Well, let me give you a very important fact. It was in 1927, in the founding of the science of quantum physics, that we get the most important insight from one of the founding fathers of quantum physics, Max Planck. And what does Max say? All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force. We must assume behind that force the existence of a conscious, an intelligent mind. He concludes, this mind is the matrix of all matter. Well, that was, what, 70 some more years ago, 100 years ago? I see, 
Has that changed? I go, no. Uh, look at this, for example. This is an article out of the most prestigious scientific journal on this planet, Nature. And I say, well, what's this article? I say, it's called The Mental Universe. It's by a quantum physicist at Johns Hopkins University. I'm not going to go and describe it by everything he says in the article, because Richard Kahn Henry, the author, summed it up in the last sentence. Let me emphasize for you that last sentence in this article on quantum physics. The universe is immaterial. It's mental and spiritual. Live and enjoy. Well, this has been the constant truth of quantum physics since the beginning. And quantum physics is the most valid of the sciences in regard to the theories actually predicting reality. So the significance is, we have to do something about our consciousness. Now, I've been talking about that consciousness for a long time. But finally, medicine is actually just beginning to see the light of this new insight. I'd like to read a quote from you from Steve Cole, a professor of medicine at the University of California, Los Angeles. He wrote an article on poverty and the genetics of health. And I'd like to share with you an excerpt out of this article, because for me, it's so important that I'm not the only one out there saying this. And in fact, this is now becoming part of mainstream medicine. So what does he say about this article? And the answer is simply this, quote, to an extent that immunologists and psychologists rarely appreciate, we are architects of our own experience. But then he goes on to say, your subjective experience carries more power than your objective situation. And I go, well, that sounds interesting. Actually, it's more than interesting. It's the most profound sentence I could read for you. And I go, why? Well, in a sentence, he talks about subjective experience. I say, what is subjective experience? It means experience influenced by our feelings, our opinions, and our beliefs. Subjective is what you think about something. And then he goes on, he said that the subjective experiences carry more power than your objective situation. I go, objective situation? What does that mean? The situation that is not influenced by your personal feelings or opinions. It's just based on facts. So now let's read it, replacing subjective with belief and objective with reality. Now let's read this sentence and it goes, your belief carries more power than your reality. This is the merging of quantum physics and biomedical science coming together. They both agree it is through our consciousness that we are creating the experiences we are having in our biology and the behavior that we're experiencing and manifesting in the world. And when we understand this and take it from the awareness of the conscious mind, it says, yes, I, I know that as a principle. I say, yeah, but we must take that belief and put it into our subconscious program because our life is coming 95% from the subconscious. So if we don't take that belief and put it in the subconscious, the knowledge in our conscious mind will have no influence on our lives. We're in a state that says now we must own this truth and walk this truth in order to take us from today's world into that future where that possible heaven on earth is available to everyone on the planet at the same time. Not just even the people, the animals, the birds, the insects, and every other living form is dependent on our consciousness. The more people sharing the same consciousness of a healthy, happy, harmonious future, the more people that are thinking that, the more broadcasts, the more tuning forks, and they add up because there's power. The more people sharing the same consciousness, the more power that consciousness has to manifest itself. And so all of a sudden I say, well, what's evolution all about? And I say, each of us is a participant to create a consciousness that represents our heaven on earth. Because the more people that share that consciousness, the more the reality will manifest heaven on earth. And in that regard, life is a honeymoon.